G'day Sawdust Makers. In this video, I'm gonna show you how with your creek jig and about 10 bucks worth of materials, you can make this awesome fold away recipe book stand. Let's go. So all you're gonna need is a couple of lengths of 19 mil by 42 mil dressed pine, that and three small hinges. We start measuring and we start cutting you'll find that you're basically building two frames. A front frame that includes the leg and the book rest, and the back frame that includes the slotted stand. So that's our leg. We're gonna cut a 45 mil bevel on the leg. The next is to mark the slotted stand. We're just gonna mark those one inch apart, three lines, very easy. Those three slots will give us a range of different heights that we can set this cookbook stand. So I've cut those grooves. I use my mitre saw but there's a million different ways that you could do it. I've then cut 45 degree corners off the book rest. I'm laying out my frames and I'm setting aside the pieces that will actually need pocket holes. Now it's Craig o'clock. Bust out the K5 and this is where the magic happens. So you want to make sure that your jig is accurately set up for your project and the thickness of timber that you're using. Plug in the vacuum using the K5 jig vacuum attachment and away we go. So keep drilling all them pocket holes. It's not many pocket holes really, to be honest. Now the jig tells us that because we're using 19 mil timber, we need to 32 mil coarse thread screws, which is made for softwood. I'm putting glue on the ends. You don't need to use glue when using pocket screws, but I just wanted to with this project. So I've decided to use Type 1 3, and then I'm driving all the pocket screws in. So very quickly, it's come to life, and we have two frames. Because we bought dressed timber to start with, it doesn't need much of a sand, but obviously we want it to have a nice finish. Before we get onto the hinges, we want to attach that book rest. Now there are a number of ways that you can attach that book rest and I'm taking the easy path. I'm just going to put a bead of glue, clamp that down tight until the glue dries and you're good as gold. Depending on what tools are available to you, you could screw that in or you could even use a brad nailer and shoot some brads through the back of it. Wipe down any excess glue with a wet cloth or a wet rag Actually, come to think about it, I'm gonna do that now. Couple of small brad nails in the back, and then I can unclamp it and keep going at the project. And now the Danish oil. Danish oil makes the grain absolutely sing. It looks fantastic. It goes on easily. So we let it dry, and then we give it a rub down afterwards, get any excess off, before we apply the next coat. All up, this got three coats. Now that the Danish oil has dried, it's time for the final part, which is adding the hinges and the hinged leg. We want to make sure it all sits correctly and then drill some small pilot holes so we don't split the timber. And then in go the hinges. We do the leg last, so line that all up correctly and then screw it in and check it out. It works, how cool is that? While it's made as a cookbook stand, you could put an iPad or a tablet on there. You could put your Carbitech catalog. So it looks great in the kitchen. Really happy with how that came up. And then it folds away flat. So easy to set up and use. Not counting the amount of time between oiling. You're really only looking at an hour or so of building. And yeah, $10 in materials. What a fantastic weekend project. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Ryan from Oz Sawdust Makers, and I'll be back again soon with more Craig projects for Carbotech and Craig Australia. See you next time.